Described in the Iliad as Nestor's kingdom of Sandy Pylos, this Bronze Age city represented one of the most important palace centers of the Mycenaean civilization. In this episode, we will go through the history of this trade-rich settlement and cover the rise and fall of the wealthy city of Pylos. The area, which later came to be known as Messenia, had been continuously inhabited since at least 6 millennium BCE. These early inhabitants, although not great in numbers, were mainly settled on the western shores of the region and by 3000 BCE developed the first farming communities of Messenia. About one millennium later, around 2000 BCE, another culture started emerging on the Peloponnese and throughout the Greek mainland. This new tribe came to be known as the Achaeans, who quickly spread from their heartland of Argolis into Laconia and Messenia, as well as the other parts of the peninsula. As was the case with other regions of Hellas, the Achaeans assimilated the population they found into their own society and started establishing the first significant towns in the area. One of those towns was Pylos or Pylos, situated on the western coast and the close proximity of the earlier farming settlements. Although the Achaeans established a number of other towns, it was Pylos that attained the dominant position in the region and by 1600 BCE became an important local center. As the Linear B records only start appearing during the 15th century BCE, it is difficult to assess the historical events of early Pylos, apart from it serving as a capital of a relatively large area in southwestern Peloponnese. What we do know is that Pylos greatly prospered from trade, both regionally among other palace centers and also internationally, reaching places such as Crete and Egypt. The political system was based on the typical Mycenaean hierarchy, with a king called the Vanax at the top, followed by his right hand, then a class of the elite companions, wealthy landowners and priests, the damos or ordinary people, and finally the slaves. It is unknown whether Pylos had its own Wanax, or it was a title reserved for the High King of Mycenae, as it appears to be the case in the late Mycenaean period, while the other rulers went by the title of Basileus. This was supposed to signify the special position that the Mycenaean king held over his counterparts of other cities, inside an alliance or a loose confederation between the palace centers. Either way, the ruling class in Pylos was undoubtedly among the wealthiest in Bronze Age Greece, judging by the amount of gold, jewelry and artifacts found in the shaft tombs of the rulers. One of those tombs, dating to a time between 1600 and 1470 BCE, is of the so-called Griffin Warrior, either a member of the ruling class or a Pelian ruler himself. The tomb contained armor, weapons, gold and an extensive amount of masterfully crafted golden artifacts, all placed inside the resting place with a griffin engraved on an ivory plaque in the tomb. 
Following the Mycenaean conquest of the Minoan Crete, the Cretan writing system, called the Linear A, was used by the Mycenaeans to create their own script, the Linear B, and thus finally starting to record their language. The city that profited the most from this development was none other than Pylos, due to its position as the trading hub of the Achaeans. The archaeologists unearthed over 1,000 Linear B tablets on the site of the Pelian settlement, more than any other city on the Greek mainland. These records, although mainly administrative, showed a lot about the structure and organization in both Pylos and Mycenaean society in general. From here, we learned that the territory of Pylos was divided into 16 districts. Each district was governed by an official called Coretor and was further divided into local communities called Damos, meaning the common people. Each Damos was then headed by a people's representative called Damokolos. The following period marked the expansion of the Mycenaean Greece and great prosperity of its cities, most of which were significantly enlarged and more urbanized, mirroring the peak of the Mycenaean power, with the Mycenaean Wanax coming to be recognized as one of the great kings among the political powers of the Bronze Age. Pylos itself was greatly increased in both wealth and population, which between 1450 and 1200 BCE likely numbered between 50 and 120,000 inhabitants. Its main palace, known as the Palace of Nestor, covered a vast area and to this day represents one of the best preserved palaces of the Mycenaean period. Closely aligned to Mycenae, Pylos likely contributed with vast amount of soldiers and chariots for the military campaigns against foreign enemies. However, unlike Mycenae and most other centers, Pylos was the only major city on the mainland which was not fortified. This was likely due to the fact that none of the major adversaries of the Achaeans came from the west, but were rather seen in the great powers of the east or warlike tribes coming from the north. The first recognizable names of the Pelian hierarchy come to us in the 13th century BCE. The Linear B tablets record a noble named Enkeliaon, who owned numerous estates, including farmland, thousand grapevines, thousand fig trees and forty men serving as rowers in the fleet. His precise title is difficult to determine, as it is not mentioned and royal officials such as Wanax and Lavagetas were always mentioned with their titles and not personal names. He could have also been a Basileus, as this title was likely in use for the Pelian rulers at the time, at least according to the later Iliad. Either way, it was from this time that the ancient Greek tradition starts recording the stories of the Pelian nobles and rulers, as well as their whereabouts in the Mycenaean world. Thus, the Greek mythology recalls the Nelidae, the royal ruling house of Pylos, named after Neleus, the Pelian Basileus that had ruled one generation before the legendary Trojan War. King Neleus would ultimately suffer a terrible fate, as he was killed by legendary Heracles after a dispute, and was succeeded by his son and the celebrated king Nestor, who afterwards, after a long reign, went on to become Agamemnon's chief advisor during the Trojan War. The war itself proved to be fatal for many of the Achaean rulers and princes, as well as the general situation in Greece, where the Mycenaean civilization was inevitably declining. Apart from the Trojan War and the subsequent period of instability that brought Greece to its knees, the general world order of the Bronze Age was on the blink of collapse. As the warlike confederation known as the Sea Peoples ravaged the Eastern Mediterranean, many of the great civilizations of the Bronze Age were either completely destroyed or reduced to the shadows of their former selves. 
the Achaeans, although apparently having their own bands of warriors joining the sea peoples, ultimately suffered the similar fate as their kingdoms were severely weakened due to the disappearance of the large-scale trade, endless wars and inner struggles. Sometime around 1180 BCE, the city of Pylos was destroyed by fire. It appears that the Pelians already anticipated an attack from the sea, mentioning rushed defense preparations, but gave no information about the attackers. The region of Pylos would still continue to be inhabited into the Dark Ages, with the ancient tradition telling us that the Nelaid dynasty still had some sway over Messenia, or at least parts of it, until they were finally expelled by the invading Heraclidae at about 1100 BCE. The legacy of Pylos, however, would continue to live on as the Nelades moved to Athens, where they even reached the position of kings, and their tribes surviving into the historical times, being among the prime constituents of the Athenian nobility. Please consider subscribing and sharing the video, as this is a one-person production and it greatly helps the visibility of the channel. Special thanks to History with Sai, Nico, Panayotis Yanopoulos, Fred Leckie and Estate Care for their continuous support. If you wish to become a Patreon member, please click the link in the video description. This was 1XTV and we'll see you again soon.